everybody, Tim W. Rago here, games, movies, and vlogs. How the hell is everybody? And welcome to the first episode of Mystery Box 2023. So, without wasting any time, let's get right into it, shall we? Now, when it comes to finding great quality figures on the market, it's a bit of a challenge because half the time figures are either small or look unbelievably cartoony, which is the case for some of the Godzilla vs. Kong and Jurassic World figures seen at Walmart nowadays. The two figure brands, though, that are still managing to produce some good stuff are SH Monster Arts and NECA. Last year, I had bought some figures from them, such as the 1933 King Kong, Knifehead from Pacific Rim, Godzilla 1984, and Ghost from Predator 2. Now, I'm not kidding about that. Look it up. The actual name of this guy is literally Ghost. But the main focus of this first episode are the Xenomorphs, which I have also bought NECA figures of last year. Now, we all know what a Xenomorph looks like. Humanoid body, extended backward curving head, no eyes, a second mouth that shoots out of its main mouth, clawed hands and feet, and a long skeletal looking tail with a sharp spike at the end of it used as a weapon with the coloration of jet black and covered in biological armor along with having literal acid for blood, which makes them a tough but very fun enemy to kill. Throughout the film franchise, these monsters have always had the same design, with only a couple of the movies giving the heads a bit more detail as opposed to the smooth head look. But NECA, though, has taken several steps further in creating several variations of Xenomorphs. This isn't the first time seeing this, however, since the seriously awesome Xbox 360 game Aliens Colonial Marines and a game called Aliens Fireteam Elite, which I have never heard of until this month, does the same. The purpose of this video is on the latter with the Xenomorph variation called the Spitter. Now, before I review this thing, let's get it out of the box, shall we?
Okay, so to start off, let's get the pros out first. First off, I love the silhouette of this thing, which has a very raptor-ish kind of aesthetic to it. Second, I love the look of the hands with some of the fingers joined together, which is very reminiscent of the first Xenomorph from the 1979 original film. Pro number three is the detailing on the head, which is very reminiscent of Aliens and Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Plus the glowing, I guess, acid sac showing where the acid is held for it to spit at its opponents, giving it a very mutant feel as opposed to a normal xenomorph. I doubt, however, this little detail references this, but it reminds me of the giant python from that movie that came out in the year 2000 on, I believe, the Sci-Fi Channel? The giant snake in that movie was able to shoot acid out its mouth by the use of sacs located in the back of the throat. Another detail that I like is the inclusion of the... whatever these things are on the back. In the movies, it's never explained what these are or if they serve any purpose for these animals or if they're just there for design purposes. Some NECA brand aliens don't have these in the case of the Chrysalis alien, which is very interesting giving a way to distinguish the different variations of this species. Another pro I give this figure is being able to bend the tail in any position you want. Okay, and lastly, I like how the legs move. They bend at the knee here along with the usual hip joint and also that the arms bend at the elbow along with the usual shoulder joint. The mouth opens too, which is okay. I mean, there, there's the second mouth in there, but I wish this second mouth would come out. One odd detail about this variation of Xenomorph, though, is the lack of a tail spike, which is one of their two main methods of attack. I guess since this thing can spit acid, it has no need for one. But, of course, there are cons with this figure, and this thing only has two. First off, the detail on this is not as good as other alien variations. Take, for example, the Rhino Alien version number two and the Chrysalis Alien. Notice how heavy these figures are on the detailing, but the spitter is not as heavily detailed. Sure, this thing has a decent amount of detailing to it, but it could use a ton more. Okay, now the second con that I have with this figure is in the hands. Like, you can see here that the wrist moves, but I would have preferred the fingers to move along with the wrist to give it just a little more range of movement. Overall, the NECA Spitter Alien is not a bad figure to have in any monster collection. The detailing that it has is really not that bad, but it could use more, and the design of it is seriously cool, because, come on guys, we all know Xenomorphs are always awesome to watch and shoot at. It's a seriously iconic movie monster, and NECA shows how much they care about the legacy of this species with the figures. I give this figure a solid 6 out of 10. Alright, well, I hope you all enjoyed the first episode of the unboxing series that I'm doing this year. I know this video took me a lot longer than it should have to make. Um, I, I, I don't know why it took me this long. I got no answer for that. But I hope you guys enjoyed it all the same. Um, please be sure to like, share, and consider subscribing. And also, on the bottom right corner of the banner, the links to my DeviantArt, um, Dimension Store 2022, as well as my Instagram, Lizardman2021, are up there. If you want to see uh, me, you know, having you know having my nerdy fun, and also come see some kaiju and dinosaur fan art, then uh, yeah, come check me out on both of those. So yeah, this is uh, Tim W Radio, and I'm gonna say peace out, everybody, and see you all in whatever video I decide to do next.